Now we're gonna solve trig equations here. I'm gonna start out with an inverse trig equation that we're gonna solve, and then all the rest will be regular. So our first example we'll do, the instructions for all these problems are gonna be solve. Now, it won't say solve for which variable, but these equations will have one variable in them. Pi is not a variable, pi is a number. The variable is x, so we need to solve for x. The way we're gonna do that is get everything else out of the uh, left side. So to get the three out, we're gonna multiply by a third. Now, how do we get sine inverse out of here? Well, you're going to change this around. This is equivalent to x equals sine pi over three, and sine pi over three is square root of three over two. There we go. We solve for x it's by itself, and this is our final answer. Square root of three over two. All the rest of these problems are going to have multiple answers. And um, we're just going to uh, write down a pattern for them. We're basically going to add as many periods, um, an arbitrary number of periods. And we're gonna start out with easier problems and then move to more difficult ones. Now on this, the plus square root three happens outside the sine function. So sometimes you'll see it written with the parentheses around the input for sine. But it could definitely be written like this. And the rule is for function, for inputs of functions. So here's the function sine. Its input is whatever's to the right of it. And it's really just the first term to the right. So if there's any addition subtraction, so for example, all this happens after the sine function is taken. And PEMDAS can be very useful here. When in doubt, go up. So subtract square root three. And then multiply both sides by a half. Now we have to figure out what theta value, or what, yeah, what theta values, um, when you take sine of it, gives you negative square root three over two. I like to think about this in a geometrical sense. So there's, oh, come on, good enough. Unit circle. All right, sine's a y value. It's negative, and uh, it's good to know the unit circle values pretty well because I can see this is the biggest negative value before I would hit negative one. <clears throat> so it's down here, negative square root three over two, and there's gonna be two points on the unit circle that have this y-coordinate, they're right here. Again, I'm worried about the y-coordinate because I have a sine function. If I had cosine, I'd be thinking about the x coordinate and you know the other functions accordingly. We'll do tangent, some tangent problems as well. So there's two angles happening here. So there's gonna be actually two answers for this. You can measure these angles either the short way right here, meaning uh, backwards or clockwise, or you could go the long way, the scenic route, and do a different color. So it's okay to measure these either way. So whichever of those two ways you wanna measure. So I'm gonna go the backwards direction. And let's see, the first one, the smaller of the two, the one that just goes right here is negative pi over three. Or the other one, is negative two pi over three. 
So theta is pi over 3 or negative 2 pi over 3. Now, are these the only two names of the angles? Of course not. I can rotate, uh, do a full rotation either direction, positive or negative, and I can do 10 full rotations, 11 full rotations. I can do as many full rotations as I want and still be at the same angle in the unit circle. So how do we um, add? So what I want to do is um, add any number, whole number, not just number, but you don't want to add a half a rotation, for example. So a full rotation is 2 pi. So what we're going to write it as is 2 pi k for any k in the integers. So this means any k in the integers. And what are the integers? If you write them out in set notation, that's what it looks like. And we use dot, dot, dot when there's an obvious pattern. It should be pretty obvious what the pattern is both directions. So it's all the whole numbers and the negative whole numbers. So how do we write this down? So I want to include all this in one answer. So we're going to write our answer like this. Theta equals minus pi over 3 plus 2 pi k or theta equals negative 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. And then you need to say where k comes from. Uh, for any k in z. So that's how we'll write our answer down for this in a much more compact way. You're going to notice on web work <clears throat> that they're going to limit the, uh, most of the problems will limit the uh, range of where theta can be. So on the next problem, I'm going to put a, no, I won't do it on the next one. I'll do it on the problem after that. So our next example, I am going to use parentheses for function notation. There's not very much algebra I need to do here, uh, but something is a little strange. The thing that's a little strange is it's not just sine theta, it's sine of two theta or sine of twice theta. So let's just think about the sine function. Sine again is a y value, and I want to know when is a y value positive one half. Unit circle, we're doing positive one half. So there's going to be two points on the circle with the positive one half y value. And so, of course, two angles. Now it makes sense to measure these in the standard counterclockwise way. So what are the names of these angles? The first one you hit is pi over 6. And the second one, this would be pi over 6 here. So it's 5 pi over 6. Uh, but I did make a mistake. My uh, Almost everything is correct. The only thing I didn't pay attention to is over here, it's not sine of theta, but it's sine of 2 theta. So the way we're going to correct this, we got 2 times theta. So what we did was we didn't solve for theta, we solved for 2 theta. So how do you solve for theta? You divide both of these by 2. We're 
we're dividing both equations by two. So theta equals pi over 12 or theta. Ooh, and before we do this, I completely forgot. We need to add, wow, rotations. And now we divide both sides by two. So I could write as one half times pi over six plus two pi k, which is pi over 12 plus pi k. And the other one will be almost the same, except we're gonna have five pi over 12 plus pi k. And we need to say where k comes from. This is for any integer k. There we go. <clears throat> and it's probably a good place to take a break. Um, so we don't have too much further to go. It's not a very long section.